I hereby call this show to order. We are here at the Wells Fargo Arena in Philadelphia where the Democratic National Convention kicked off this afternoon. Behind us right now, scenes already of disunity between uh, various factions of the Democratic Party as uh, the gavel has been gaveled in, but you've got chanting Sanders fans, chanting Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders, Hillary, San Hillary Clinton's fans chanting her name also. It's already a rocking, raucous, and rollicking convention, and we're just getting started here. Even before we got started, however, the Democrats were dealing with double-barreled controversies. Outgoing party chair Debbie Wasserman Schultz was nowhere to be found when proceedings were called to order just past 4 p.m. By then, Wasserman Schultz had relinquished that honor, the gaveling, to Baltimore Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake. Wasserman Schultz handed over that gavel under extreme pressure, having been heckled mercilessly at a Florida delegation event this morning by supporters of Sanders, infuriated by the revelations brought to light by the DNC's WikiLeaks email leak this weekend, and insistent that her planned resignation at the end of the week does not go far enough. A couple after hours after that event, Bernie Sanders addressed his delegates at the Philadelphia Convention Center, not far from here, where it was clear that Sanders supporters are not as ready to stand with Hillary Clinton as he is. John, does Clinton and her team have enough in their arsenal to stop these twin controversies which are dominating this day so far from dominating the week? That is a very large and important question. Um, you know, look, there, this is a star-studded lineup, unlike what we saw last week in Cleveland, um, just tonight alone. We have, in the primetime hour, we have uh, Michelle Obama kicking things off at 10 o'clock, Elizabeth Warren, the keynote speaker named this morning, and then Bernie Sanders, very important speech in terms of this very question. Um, and then as we go through, we all know Bill Clinton, Joe Biden, uh, Barack Obama, Tim Kaine, Hillary Clinton. That's a lot of arsenal. That's a lot of firepower. But there's also a lot, of, still a lot of anger, and there's still a lot of upset among a lot of Democrats. Bernie here. Sanders said to his supporters for months, say you want a revolution. And now he's saying, oh, no, forget the revolution. Let's yeah. get in line. Yeah. It doesn't take much in a hall to disrupt the proceedings. Yep. And while Bernie Sanders is going to try to bring people together tonight, the early hours here, what you see in the streets in Philadelphia, the ongoing questions about the emails, who would have thought on the first day of the Democratic convention that Bernie Sanders would be a more unifying force for Hillary Clinton than Debbie Wasserman Schultz? Yep. But that's what we face now. I don't know that how they're going to control this tonight yep. because based on what we've seen so far, the Sanders delegates – are not going to yield. Well, especially given the fact that until we get to 10 o'clock, other than Cory Booker, who speaks a little bit before 10, there's not a lot of firepower, right? So you've got hours of p potential disharmony until you get to those big progressive speakers. And those four, I'd say, adding Booker onto the big three I mentioned before, this is the progressive right, night. Right, but if the afternoon's any indication I that know. Mr. Progressive Bernie Sanders was speaking to the most friendly people too, man, they did not yield. And the Clinton people are powerless to whip this in any way. No. The, the, the Sanders people in the streets and in the hall, they're not interested in tradition. Right. They're not interested in, in unity for unity's sake. Right. So it's easy to overstate what the possibilities are. But right now, if you're the Clinton planners of this convention, you have to say that a lot of the bandwidth today and into tomorrow at least is going to be taken up with dealing with these twin controversies. Right. And there's a lot to be said for the analogy in the long run that you know, like in 2008, a lot of Sanders supporters will come to uh, Hillary Clinton the same way a lot of Clinton supporters went to Barack Obama. But this, what we're hearing right now, is more disharmony on the floor than you heard in the entire time, I believe, at the Denver Convention in 2008. Hardest thing to deal with in politics is emotion. Hardest yeah. thing to stop, hardest thing to harness and corral.